Great. I'm Abby. And I'm Claire. We've got our badges on. Hope you've all got your name badge on. It'd be nice to, uh, to say hello to you and actually be able to greet you by name. Um, yes. Hello. <laughs> Bear with. <laughs> Great. That, can we hear you? Yeah. Hello. Oh, it's all right. We might be switching. Right. Well, should we go over some church news? And if it doesn't work, then I'll um, throw it all out there. No. Love it. Welcome. Um, guys, for any of you who might be new, welcome. It is not always as chaotic as this. Um, we are totally organized and fully prepared for everything um, and all eventualities. So <laughs> There's a lot going odd. on here. Yeah. So I'm going to keep going while this there is we going go. on. Cool. Okay. <laughs> I literally know what's happening. Um, so very big welcome to you, particularly if you are new or visiting. If you would like to us to get to know you better, which we would love to do, there are some welcome cards on the welcome desk at the back. They look do you mean to hold it? like this. And you can Ooh. fill in some details on the back and we can get to know you and it'll be a really nice time. And if you are new or you've joined since about 2020 when all the years have blurred into one, so it feels like about a year, then it'd be really helpful if you could join the growth track as well. This will be starting in October. There are also flyers that look like this on the welcome desk. And you can come and find out over three weeks what it means to be a part of St. T's and what we do here and get deeply rooted in our congregations. Yes. So um, for those of you who were here last week or have been here for the last few weeks, you will know that sadly our vicar John has left us, which is very, very sad. Um, and Helen will be leaving us as well. Um, so we've got a book at the back. Um, so when you came in on your left-hand side, there was like a welcome desk with some, all your stickers and everything. But on the right-hand side, that way, I had to double check then. Um, there's a book. If you want to sign that to say, uh, to say farewell to John, then please do. But... In good news, we're on a hunt for a new vicar. And if you would like information about that, uh, please do come along this Tuesday, 7.45 in the centre, which is the building that's just at the other side of the church there. Brand new building, you can't miss it. Um, please do come along to hear more about what it's going to be like in the, the hunt for a new vicar, as well as prayer for that and the coming few months for us as a church. And next week, throughout all of our congregations, we have Tear Fun Sunday in each service. We have, as St. T's, a long history of supporting the charity Tear Fund, and they do incredible work to end extreme poverty and injustice. So next week, there will be an opportunity to hear more about this through each of our services. There will also be an opportunity to respond both prayerfully and financially. So do be thinking this week um, if you could contribute to that or what your part in that might be, and come ready to hear more about Tear Fund next week. Great. And then the week after that, not that we're trying to bombard you with loads and loads of information, uh, but the week after that is Harvest Sunday. Um, so we're doing a harvest collection and all the proceeds and everything will go towards SafeNet and the Olive Branch. Um, there are bookmarks. They should be on your seats or around your seats or near your seats. Please grab one, take one, put it in your Bible, keep it with you, but it will remind you about what is happening on Harvest Sunday. Great. And the final one of Church News. You've nearly made it. Congratulations. <laughs> the final one is you may see already, if you take a gander around the congregation, that some of our lovely students are already returning. Hello, Woo! students. <clears throat> and these students, yeah, welcome, students. <laughs> Um, these students tend to regularly be hungry and they would love you <laughs> to feed them. So if you would like to be part of a rotor that will come and feed these lovely students on um, student tea each Sunday, then do come and see the lovely Ellen with a clipboard who is waving here, who would love to sign you up to do that. I'm sure the students would also love that too. That can be as an individual or a group and the church can help you financially and with set up and set down and all of those things. So do get involved. Students will be immensely grateful. 
cool. And the rest of our church news and anything else that's going on, or reminders if you've just completely blanked out the last five minutes or got confused while Abby was having microphone issues, um, all of that is on our Connect email. So if you want to sign up for the Connect, then please do. That's, there's information about that somewhere, I'm sure. Sign up for the Connect. That comes out at sometime on Friday morning that some people are very keen about the 6:59. time. 6.59, precisely. Um, yeah, find out more. Um, uh, and just a quick uh, notice, this is a side note, but it's really important for this service. We are going to be stopping at 8 o'clock this evening for a moment of silence. Uh, so if you think that everything's just randomly stopped at some point, it's because we're going to stand and have a moment of silence in memory of the Queen, um, a pause and, uh, of reflection as we join in with the nation. So, Abby, Ooh. after all that church news, it's great. Um, Every week, or not every week, every month even, we have a different mission partner. How exciting! How exciting, yes. mission partner? Mission partner, well, we support, as a church, 12 different mission partners, one for every month. Clever that. And we, um, we support, yeah, 12 people who are, uh, work with, in different organisations, either around the globe or in this country here. Um, and I, I, do you have any idea who this mission partner might be this Sunday? I actually do have quite a close connection. A very close connection with this person. To September's mission partner. Yes. Do you want to tell us who it is? Um, that would be myself. <laughs> Me, myself and I. Hey! Thank Thanks you very much. much. Cool. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm September's mission partner. Fantastic. Like to know? So it would be great to know a little bit about um, who you are, who do you work for, and actually what do you do? Because like, I know that you work with students, but that, I mean, you could literally do anything within that. So really um, who are you? <laughs> what do you do? And, and who are you working with and for? Great. So I'm Abby. I work for UCCF, which stands for the University and Colleges Christian Fellowship. And we work supporting students in their mission on campus to reach other students. So this looks like a whole variety of things. And most of the time, I don't know what I'm doing either. And each day <laughs> and week looks different. It will involve um, discipling students one-to-one, -one, opening up scripture together, as well as leading training and equipping students at conferences, seminars, um, various things like that, giving talks, supporting their events. And just all we can do to help students reach their friends and their course mates and their flatmates and the people that they live and rub shoulders with every day to win them for Jesus. Great. So, yeah. so we've got some students in here now. How can they maybe be involved in the work that you're doing and what can they, like, what does it look like? There's the church, but there's also stuff at campus. How can you kind of link them two together? Yeah, great question. So I like to think of the Christian Union on campus as the campus missional branch of the church. Ooh. We are the um, manifestation of the church on campus um, in mission. So we are a mission team for the university, um, which will look like a whole variety of events. It will look like carol services. It will look like meals in flats. It will look like um, big mission weeks in marquees, but it will also look like conversations at 2 a.m. after a night out. So Great. all sorts of things. Cool. So if students are here, then uh, definitely go to your local Christian union. Find out a little bit more um, at your university, whether that is in uh, Cumbria or Lancaster or other places around. I'm guessing that there are other... What, what universities might be around? Yes, yeah, so pretty much whichever university you go to if you're a student, there will be a Christian union. Do you feel free to hit me up if you're not from here and I'll let you know. Cool. Um, how can we be praying for the students then? What can we be praying for them? Yeah, so over the next couple of weeks, students will be descending en masse to this city um, and cities everywhere. And I'd love you to be praying for them because there are as many types of student as there are students coming. And that will mean from different backgrounds, um, both faith and geographically, and, but also in terms of feeling. Some will be super excited and can't wait and have loads of friends. Some will be nervous. Some will be coming with all sorts of different... Um, emotions, spiritual journeys. Often when students come to university, particularly for the first time, they are in a time of making decisions for themselves. Um, some students will have been brought up in church. Many will not have been. Many will have their first encounters with the gospel when they go to university and will be at a decision point. Many will be coming from backgrounds of faith and will be living independently for the first time, making that decision um, as to whether this is something they want to claim for themselves. 
So just generally would love you to be praying for students that are coming and are moving away, often for the first time, and all sorts of things that go with that in, in their journeys. Cool. And then how can we be praying for you over the, the next few weeks and months? It seems a little bit chaotic at the moment. Um, so yeah, how can we be praying for you and, and what's going on for you, really? Yeah, thanks, Sue. So, um, I'm actually having a little bit of a change of focus in my job this year, which I'd love prayer for. So um, this is my fifth year now in the job working for UCCF. And up until this point, I've been primarily working with the universities of Edge Hill and UCLan. So a lot of traveling up and down the M6. Um, but this year, I have the immense privilege of um, primarily working with Lancaster University. Um, and we'll also be working a little bit with the University of Cumbria in Ambleside as well. So Ambleside students will be arriving from next week. Um, Lancaster starts in a couple of weeks. And I just love prayer for that transition. I'll be meeting a lot of new people, um, changing the style of work that I do, a lot less traveling um, and a lot more kind of close discipleship which I'm really excited about. Um, we've got a lot of new members on our team as well. So I have a new colleague here in Lancaster called Jorge, who I'd love you to pray for as well. He's just starting at the moment. Um, and we have three other new staff members across our Northwest region. So be praying for good transitions in our team and for me as I work with new CEUs that I haven't worked with before. Cool. Um, let's pray for you now. That's all right. Um, yeah, so if you want to, uh, feel free to kind of Reach our hand if you want to. Uh, let's spend a few minutes um, just praying for, for Abby and the work that she's doing. Father God, we thank you for Abby. We thank you for her love of students, for her love for this work. And Lord, we thank you that you have called her to work with them. Lord, we pray for her now as she uh, works with different team members, as she um, yeah, helps them transition and helps them come in to being in this city and in this area, Lord, that she can be wise um, in the, her guidance and all that she does. Lord, we pray for her also. She is meeting loads and loads of new people in the next few weeks. We pray for uh, good memory so she can remember names. We can pray that she will just be a real light and, and a real breath of fresh air where it's really hard uh, in, in a difficult environment. And Lord, we pray for the students coming in to Lancaster and to Ambleside and to the local area. Lord, we pray that um, those who don't know you may meet with you in some way. And Lord, we pray for those who do know you, that they will be able to stand firm in the knowledge of you, be able to stand firm in your word and your truth, and that they, be a, they may be the sort and light uh, in this area. Lord, we lift the, this time up to you. We lift this academic year up to you for Abby, for all that she does and for, for all that she meets. And we pray that your blessing on her and your goodness on her. Amen. Amen. You're totally welcome. Great. Um, we are going to, uh, in a second, we're going to stand and we're going we're gonna to start by... Um, our, kind of our, our sung worship, um, and I'm going to pray to do that. So if I want to invite the, I'll invite the band up. Um, and as we uh, sing the first song, there's going to be a collection. If you're new to this church and you want to give, uh, if you've been here for many weeks, months, years, and you would like to give, please do. Uh, but don't feel that you have to. Um, and that's going to be going around at the beginning. So let's pray as we start. Maybe let's stand up together. If you can, please stand. Father God, we thank you that we can come into your presence, that we are able to freely stand here to declare your goodness and your praise. Lord, I pray for us now. Uh, I pray that we will uh, worship you, you with our whole heart, worship you in spirit and in truth. Lord, I pray uh, that we may hear from you, you may speak to us, and that we may be uh, good and worthy, uh, yeah, and we'll be able to sing your praises in such a, and proclaim your name in such a, a loud way. Amen.
Father everlasting, the all-creating one, God Almighty. Through your Holy Spirit, conceiving Christ the Son, Jesus our Savior. I believe in God our Father. I believe in Christ the Son. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Our God is three in one. I believe in the resurrection that we will rise again. For I believe in the day.
Thank you so much to Jack and the band. If you'd like to take your seats, I'm now going to bring God's word to us for this evening. Um, tonight's passage is John chapter 3, verses 1 to 21, which can be found on page 1065 of the Church Bibles, if there is one near you, or whatever device you may have brought with you. So that's John chapter 3, verses 1 to 21, and it should also appear on the screen behind me. Now there was a Pharisee, a man named Nicodemus, who was a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the signs that you are doing if God were not with him. Jesus replied, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. How can someone be born when they are old? Nicodemus asked. Surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and of the Spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to Spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. How can this be? Nicodemus asked. You are Israel's teacher, said Jesus. And do you not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and we testify to what we have seen But still, you people do not accept our testimony. I've spoken to you of earthly things, and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but people loved darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light, so that it may be seen plainly that what they have done has been done in the sight of God. I'm now going to invite Matt up to come. Matt, is it all right if I pray for you as you open God's word with us? Father, we thank you so much for your word, for giving it to us and the access that we have. Lord, we pray for Matt now. We thank you for the preparation he's done and the ways that you've already worked through him. We pray that you would speak through him this evening, that we would come to a better knowledge and understanding of both the passage, but a deeper love for you as well as a result of what Matt brings to us. We pray these things in your name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Abby. So, this is the third time we've had this talk today, and each time it changes slightly. So if you're here for the third time, lucky you, I think it might be me who's the only person who's seen this talk three times. Um, Also, it's changed slightly, because at the 11 o'clock, I was knelt down for the talk, and then I couldn't get up. And if you go on YouTube, there's an awkward moment where I am bum-shuffling across the stage to sit down. So I thought I'd spare myself a bum-shuffle twice in a day, and I've brought an extra cajon. Anyway, that has nothing to do with the talk, but I just wanted to tell you how embarrassed I was. So, my first question is, what are you expecting for the next, say, 10, 15 minutes? What are you expecting from the talk not a <laughs> I can't spell that, so we'll have to leave that off. Any, anyone that's not that person? What? Say again. Discernment. Discernment. 
There we go. I think I've got that one. Okay. Anyone else? There's no expectations. You just all turned up in the hope that something would happen at you for the next 20 minutes and then you go home. Fair play. There we go. Lower the bar, why don't we? Inspiration for the nation. Oh, well, now they all come out. Yeah. <laughs> Lovely. Anyone else? Don't say you didn't get the chance to influence the sermon. Challenging. Challenging. There we go. So bear in mind, these are what we're expecting out of the sermon. Some of you are expecting some sort of discernment, maybe to hear from God in a new way, a way that we understand. Inspiration. I hope you're not looking for me to inspire you, but actually for Jesus to speak through what we've prepared. Uh, for God's love to be here and to be challenged, potentially live life differently as a result of what we've thought about. So I've sort of set a scene so that the story, I hope, will come to life. Somebody said, why did you sit around the table this morning? And I was saying, well, it was supposed to draw us into the conversation. So Nicodemus, as part of the story, is going to sit here. Jesus is going to sit here. And I want you to imagine that you're part of the conversation sat here as well. So I'm going to observe what happened, and I'd love you to imagine that you are part of the conversation too. Oh, it's much better on a seat. <laughs> Less dramatic, but hey. So in verse 1 of the Gospel reading, we have a few bits that we can learn from. It says that uh, Nicodemus was a Pharisee. Now the Pharisees, I think they've got a bit of a bad reputation from Christian history, but actually they were there to follow the rules. Now hands up if you're a rule keeper. Yeah, you put your hands up when I asked you to, well done. <laughs> hands up if you're not a rule keeper. Yes, you people make it harder for us. <laughs> now the Pharisees, their role was to make sure that everybody followed the rules. So they knew the rules and they tried to encourage you to follow the rules. Why were the rules there? To help people get closer to God. Did it always work? Well, we would suggest no, but that was why he was a Pharisee. So Nicodemus is a Pharisee and he has come to see Jesus. What's important about Nicodemus? Well, he was a senior leader. Tradition suggests that he would have been held in really high esteem, like a geography teacher. And other jobs. Uh, he was held in high esteem. He was devoted to the law. He was devoted to God. It said that he was part of the Jewish ruling council, the Sanhedrin. Now, I've read that that was 71 men who would sit round and sit on the court and help people make important decisions. The chief priests, the elders, the teachers of the law, the highest and most respected people within that culture were there. Nicodemus is one of them. He's got his status from his role. He's got his status from keeping the rules. And yet he's come to meet this rogue rabbi. This rabbi who is doing stuff that's different. This rabbi who doesn't speak from another rabbi's notes, but has his own way of speaking. He comes to speak with Jesus. He comes at night. Some people suggest that this is because he want, didn't want to be seen. Other people would say John's use of night and darkness and light and day is to talk about understanding. Nicodemus came at night, meaning maybe he didn't understand fully. Or it was just the time of day. I'm happy for it to be night time. So he approaches Jesus as a teacher to a teacher. He's trying to learn what on earth is going on with this chap. He's, he's almost trying to play catch up. I don't know whether you are an expert in the field that you work in, but if somebody comes in you're into your expertise and brings something new, you want to find out about it. I remember learning about different ways in which to communicate God's gospel. I thought, I want to learn from these people. I want to get better at this. Maybe that's Nicodemus' heart. Or is he checking up on Jesus? Well, he comes to say, 
that you've been doing some amazing things. And we know that you're from God because of the signs that you've been doing. Maybe Nicodemus has seen one of the miracles or the talks or just the way in which Jesus lives. And he knows that someone with a special relationship with God only could perform these signs. Now, in John's Gospel, where it says, very truly I tell you, it's worth noting because the sentences after it are always important. It has here, Jesus say, very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. Now, when I was a kid, born again Christians were the wacky ones. I don't know whether you, you know, you'd go on to God TV and they'd be all crazy and doing all sorts of weird stuff. Well, the good news for you and for me is born again we can still be relaxed about it. We don't have to be crazy and we don't have to pay in order to do it. We can be born again because of Jesus. Verse four, Nicodemus is not quite understanding this. He's he's beginning to ask questions. How can I be born again when I'm old? Am I to go into my mother's womb? Now, is this a joke between two people or is he actually asking the question, do I need to ring my mum up and enter her womb again? Because if I rang my mum now and said, hey mum, I've been reading the Bible, I think it's important that I'm born again, any chance I could just have nine months in your womb, she'd probably say no. I don't know. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to doubt her faith, but I imagine she would say no. I'm almost a little bit bigger than when I was born as well. I don't know about you, but um, some of you guys might relate to this. You've been dropped off by your parents at university, perhaps. My mum couldn't wait to get rid of me. At 18, she had the engine running. She threw me out with my bags. She, my dad and I were having a little moment, a bit of a cry. Oh, I always love you, Dad. And mum's like, meh, meh, let's go. Alan, we've got the house to ourselves. Come on. I don't know about you, but I have no intention of being born again if it involves anything like that. But Jesus is speaking of a deeper significance. Now, born again, if you look in the translations, you could find a translation that says born from above. This idea that rebirth takes place from above. The concept that God is in the highest place and therefore everything that comes from him comes from above. Then Jesus says, very truly I tell you, you must be born of water and spirit. Now, water within Nicodemus' culture would have been used for cleansing. But also in John's Gospel, Jesus describes himself as the water of life. But he also turns water into wine to save the couple's embarrassment, but also to show that the best is yet to come. All these things point to Jesus as new life, rebirth, being reborn, which is better than before. And then we get the spirit, this breath of God. If you read the Genesis narrative, the breath of God is breathed into creation. We often say when people die, they they took their last breath. The breath of God has gone from them. The wind of God guiding us and pushing us into the right direction. Then in verse 6, it says, The spirit gives birth to the spirit. We believe that Jesus wants to share his spirit with you. That's not a crazy, wacky thing. That's a gentle, beautiful thing. And in verse 7, it's almost like this idea of Jesus saying, why are you surprised? What's going on there, Nicodemus? The Spirit, it blows wherever it pleases. We can't necessarily see the direction. I can't say the Holy Spirit is there and it's moving there. But we can see the Holy Spirit at work in people's lives. Nicodemus is is trying to get a grasp of this. He's asking, how is this to be? And Jesus is a little bit direct as we have come to know him. He's down the line, you're meant to be the one that gets this. Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know. Jesus is speaking from his understanding. We testify to what we have seen. But you people don't accept this testimony. Nicodemus is representing all those in the Sanhedrin, all those within the Jewish community who haven't recognized Jesus in the role that he's called to be. Jesus says in verse 12, I spoke to you in earthly terms and you rejected it. How on earth are you going to believe if I speak in heavenly terms? 
We were talking about this verse before, verse 13. No one has ever gone into heaven and reported back. Well, the Son of Man was above and comes down with the authority of heaven to transform lives and helps us to be reborn with the cleansing of water and the fire of the, and the breath of the Spirit, cleansed but also filled to live life in all its fullness. Verse 14 made me get Google out, I have to admit. I had to find out what the snake bit was all about, and I read a couple of commentaries to work this out. This is a bit about how Moses led God's people out of captivity from Egypt, and Jesus will go on through death to lead his people out of the captivity of sin. Jesus will go to the cross as John's gospel plays out in order that we will not be held captive by our sin but be set free. Set free now but also in fullness in the life to come in heaven. The phrase lifted up could mean exalt, it could mean raise, it could just mean be seen up. The idea that Jesus is going to be taken outside the city and crucified up on a cross would have been part of the understanding of crucifixion in that area. It would have been a shameful thing to almost say at some point that person will be raised up on a cross. Perhaps Jesus is letting him in to that knowledge. Verse 15 says that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. This starts the day we accept Jesus into our lives. We accept his cleansing of water and he accept his spirit into our lives until we meet him in fullness in heaven. And then verse 16, if you've not had this on a t-shirt, you've not been a Christian very long, but we'll buy you a t-shirt so you can feel loved. Hands up if you've had John 3.16, some sort of memorabilia, either on a wall or your body. Oh, right, we need to get some postcards. Write it down, postcards, John 3.16. Everywhere I went as a teenage Christian, John 3.16, people would have badges, t-shirts, hats, the lot. Stationery, J, yes. Let's get some stationery. I've lost my place. So for God so loved the world, he gave his one and only son, that whoever believed in him shall not perish or get lost or be killed or destroyed, but have eternal life everlasting. It's God's doing. Nicodemus has come to Jesus to find out what he's all about. Nicodemus has spent his whole life following the law, teaching people to follow the law, working hard to keep the law, working hard to put himself in the room with God when it all ends. And yet he's in the room with the man who's going to make it all begin, with the God that loves him already, with the God that can change his life there and then, the God that doesn't need him to follow the law because he's going to fulfill the law. For the God that doesn't condemn him because he loves him. And he loves you. The God that we see at this table, the God that's part of this conversation loves you. The God loves this world. He gave himself for it. He died so that we can live. He was raised up so that we don't need to. And when we die, we get life everlasting with him. It's all for the love of God. And then verse 17, I love this. Often we forget it because it's so close to the one we bang on all about with our stationery. But verse 17 says this, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world. Often Christians get a bad name for banging the drum about what you're not allowed to do. But Jesus came to show radical love to everyone. And with that, he calls us to live a certain life, but his primary call is to tell you, you are loved. If you've come to church and you haven't felt loved, we're really sorry. We hope that over the next few weeks, you'll give us the opportunity to show you God's love, for you to receive God's love. That is our hope, that you first know that you are loved. Christ did not come to condemn the world, but to save the world. Verse 18, it's complicated, isn't it? Because if you don't believe, whoever believes is not condemned, but then those who do not believe are condemned 
there's this longing, there's this separation, there's, an, there's sort of this awaiting, something's not there because they've not believed in God's one and only son. When we try and go off on our, in our world, in our own strength, like Nicodemus, we're going to be left with questions, with problems. I've tried to follow everything, but it seems impossible. And yet with Jesus, it is possible. It doesn't mean that if we become a Christian, our life is going to be plain sailing, but it does mean when we go off direction, the Holy Spirit will blow us back in the right direction. It means that when life is tough, we have a community called church to join in with. But also when life is good, we can share our joys together too. Verse uh, verse 19, light has come into the world, but people love darkness and evil is the darkness. We can see that, can't we? We know in ourselves when we get things wrong that there's almost a, a, a pressure over us. There's a darkness that comes into our life and yet Jesus wants to illuminate those dark times. Those who do evil hate the light and will not come into the light or out of the darkness because they will be exposed. Let's allow Jesus to transform our lives by illuminating the darkness in them and then we can go into the dark places in this world and bring his light and point people back to him too. And verse 21 Whoever lives by the truth comes into the light. So it may be seen plainly that what they have done has been seen, has been done in the sight of God. Nicodemus is sat in the sight of God. He's come from the darkness, he's sat with the light of the world, and he's been offered the opportunity. We sort of said that the tagline of today was meeting Jesus changes lives. Nicodemus has met Jesus. Our question that we're left with is, did it change his life? Was he able to give up the rules, the position to follow Jesus? And I think for me, it's an invitation to each one of us, an invitation that we can ask ourselves every single day. Do we want this mind-blowing invitation to be born again? Do we want the promise of the cleansing water? Do we want the promise of God's breath in our lives? Do we want the promise of God's love? Do we want the promise of eternal life? Do we want life without condemnation? Do we want a promise of light in all our dark situations? Meeting Jesus can change our lives. We can accept those promises for ourselves. We can live lives that are transformed. We can allow Jesus to transform our mind. We can transform our expectations, although they were quite low this evening. (laughs) We can discern what God has for us through the power of his Holy Spirit by talking with other Christians. We can say, when I was reading the Bible, this is what stood out to me. And we can support one another. I really felt when I was praying that this picture came to mind. Can you help me think about it? The inspiration of the Holy Spirit is at work as we read, as we listen, as we pray. God's love hopefully is reflected through us. But also we can read about it and hear about it. We can see it in creation. And God's love is radical. It's challenging. It's hard. But it's ultimately what's best for us. Let's allow ourselves to receive Jesus' invitation today and live lives that are different. One of the things we did last year was we worked out as a church what we wanted to to define ourselves, to say what we're all about. We spent a lot of time talking and thinking and praying about where God was leading us. And we sort of worked out that our values as a church were based on God's Love. How have we received God's love and how we want to invite people to that love? Part of that was we wrote this beautiful document available in the foyer. And it's it's called Vision 2025 because we're imaginative. And it's all about welcoming home, inviting people not to home necessarily just in this place, but where God is at the center of your life. Welcome home. 
to be deeply rooted, that idea that we build our lives rooted in Christ. And we also want to be rooted as a church in this city. We want to be radically compassionate, which means we want to share God's love to all of the world. And the mission partners, that's a fraction of it. But we want to do more across this world. We want to stand up for people who have no voice in the name of Jesus, sharing love. And we also want to be generously sent. We want to receive God's spirit, not just so that we can feel nice, but that we can go into the world and change the world with Jesus' help. So as we take a moment to pause, I wonder what you notice in the passage. What is it that stands out about the Nicodemus character? And what is it that stands out about the Jesus character? I think I'm often in the Nicodemus camp. I'm often the person who sort of knows what we ought to expect or thinks he knows the rules and yet when God radically changes the plan, are we able to go with it? Nicodemus didn't see that Jesus was the answer to the very thing that he devoted his whole life to. My hope is that each one of us understand that Jesus is the answer. Jesus, meeting Jesus will change our lives. So as we come to a finish, I hope that we meet your expectations but I really hope that Jesus blows them wide open. That you meet a Jesus that loves you, that you know that in your heart, that you accept this mind-blowing invitation, that you say yes to the promise of cleansing water, you say pr yes to the promise of God's breath in your life, the Holy Spirit, you say pr yes to the promise of God's love, yes to the promise of eternal life, yes to a life without condemnation, and yes, to a promise of light in all those dark situations. Tonight, I hope you know that you are welcome to meet with Jesus. And this is a great place to do it. As we go through our worship, as we sing songs, as we reflect, let's listen to the things that we describe Jesus as and ask ourselves, is that someone we want in our lives? In a moment, we'll take that opportunity to pause with the whole nation for the Queen. But I think we're going to sing and do other things. Oh, Abby, you, you tell us how to respond. Uh, amen, by the way. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off there. Um, thank you so much for what you shared, Matt. Um, Matt has brought to us a lot of um, great and deep encouragements and challenges as well, that meeting with Jesus really is something that changes lives. So I would love for us to just take a few minutes ourselves just to reflect on what this might mean for ourselves as well in our own life. Um, perhaps you're someone here who doesn't feel like they have ever met with Jesus and would love to um, speak that through with someone, pray that through, um, or just think about what it could mean for your own life. Perhaps you're here and you feel like you've met with Jesus a thousand times over since the day you were born. Um, it'd be great just to take a moment and think, what does it look like to meet with him fresh today in my life at the moment? So we're just going to take about 30 seconds and think about what this means for us now. Um, I had the privilege of hearing this sermon twice today. Um, thank you, Matt. 
And I'm incredibly grateful that um, I got to ask Matt some questions before this service and that you, in fact, weaved those answers into your sermon um, and answered them. But I am aware that some of you may have been hearing this, or most of you probably were hearing this sermon for the first time and might still have questions. So we'd love to chat things through with you at the end. Do find someone in a lanyard if you want to keep talking about these things. There will also be people um, available to pray with here, hopefully during the next set of worship songs um so do come and take that opportunity as well and respond in prayer because we'd love to meet you um we're going to move into a time of worship now led by jack and at the appropriate moment claire will come up and lead us in a reflective moment of silence as we join the nation in remembering our queen in about five minutes time thanks jack We'll just do we'll just do a song before we go into that time of for the Queen. So f- please feel free to either stand or stay sat down and reflect on what Matt said. So.
to um, just uh, if you want to remain standing then please do we're just going to spend um, a minute in silence reflecting as a nation on uh, the queen who she was and actually her um, incredible faith uh, that she had so we'll spend a minute doing that and then we're going to watch a quick video afterwards and then we'll continue in song worship so let's uh, reflect now for a minute let's spend that time in silence
thank you for our queen and the example of faith and the example of living for you that she's brought to this country and to this world lord i pray that i just pray that we could also live up to that example lord of just just honoring you through what we do lord amen we'll stand again and um, we'll just have a, we'll have a time of worship together
one for us at the seven, but um, it's one we've been doing the last couple of weeks at the 11 o'clock service, and it just, the song just says about just, we want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. As we know there is peace within your presence, I speak Jesus. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Cause I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. addiction starts to break. There, in, there is hope and there is freedom. I speak Jesus. Your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name Let's go. 
speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Cause I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus.
you so much. Um, do you take your seats as we um, close this service? Cool. Yes, so next week, what's happening? Tear Fun Sunday. Yes, it is. Be Ooh. there or be square. Or square, yes. And come ready to pray and respond to the wonderful work of Tear Fun next week. Um, I got told we've got a guest speaker, which either knows, it means we've actually got a guest speaker or we have no idea who's actually speaking. Well, come and find out. So, <laughs> I don't know. Um, just as we were singing and praying and thinking about the Queen right at the end there, um, I had this kind of thought, and then well, I'll read this and then we can pray and go home. Uh, but it says this in, Phili- oh, no, in Galatians even. But when the set, the set time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to re- redeem those under the law that we may receive adoption to sonship. Because you are his sons, or children, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, the spirit who calls out, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but God's child. And since you are a child, God has made you also an heir. And over the last few days, we've been thinking lots about the heir to the throne and who that is and what that looks like. And people have been looking up the whole kind of monarchy and royal uh, lines and everything. Uh, But here, we are called God's heir. We are his child, his children. Um, And I think as we go from this place, let's remember that who God sent, he sent his son Jesus to come, as we've heard from Matt, to come and to uh, give life uh, and give love. Uh, He did not come to condemn the world, but to save the world. And because of that, we can be God's heir. We can be God's children. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you so much that you sent your son uh, to die in our place, that we can have a life with you that you did not send your son to condemn, but to save. And that means that we can be heirs with you, that we can be your children and we can inherit um, your world because you've created that for us. Lord, we pray as we go from this place, may we feel uh, excited about that, may we feel passionate about that, may we feel loved by you. And Lord, I pray that as we go, um, and as we go into our weeks this week, that we may all be able to live uh, in that knowledge and in that excitement. Amen. Amen. Great. See you next week. Go and have blessed and wonderful weeks, everyone. Yes. Great is your faith.